Welcome to our second Confluence Conference. I see a lot of uh, family faces. I am very happy and very happy to lead this uh, second Confluence Conference of our network. We have to say that we acknowledge the support of the European Union Creative Europe Co Cooperation Grant Program in the framework of the European Project WALK, which is the name of our network, Working Arts and Local Communities. So from time to time we meet and we explain all the partners, what are we in, what are we are doing, which we already know because we have a lot of discussions and a lot of comments, but we have a moment in which we all gather and explain each other what happens, how, what are we doing, and uh, we open this meeting to the world and we open this meeting to all the friends that we know we have all around the world. So this conference which last, which will last uh, about uh, one hour, 16 minutes, and we will start by listening to the leader of our group, the one who created uh, together with Gerd Vermeer this project and the one who gathered all of us in Prespa and where everything began. So uh, we are going to listen first about this pro this progress of our network to Yanis Jogas, who is a um, professor of the fine art and applied arts of the School of Visual Arts of Western Macedonia, as you know, in Greece. And uh, after I will, uh, explain you little by little what we are going to do. So welcome, Janis. We are all, uh, the micro is yours. Uh, thank you very much for introducing me, Clara. And thanks, uh, Andrew, for uh, coordinating that. And of course, we welcome all our guests uh, who have joined this meeting. Uh, it is always, um, a very moving uh, moment when we meet after a month of uh, working and uh, we make these uh, confluences, as we say, when we somehow put things uh, down to see uh, where we are and how are we going to proceed with that. This is, uh, we are now at the end of the fifth month. Uh, to say it, uh, first of all, the whole spirit of this uh, process is uh, to work with uh, two concepts, which is one is watching and the other is communities. And uh, especially all the times the concept of communities has been important, but especially now in these uh, turbulent times that we all live, and uh, especially for communities that are in the fringe of some danger or some threat, so to say, in internal or external. So the main uh, aspect of this project was to introduce through watching methods of uh, allowing these communities to empower, to heal, and uh, to face and possibly to heal. We don't know that, but at least to reflect and deal with the, the difficulties. This is uh, by itself a, a very important uh, art experiment because it takes uh, walking away from what we call uh, individual or uh, art uh, word-oriented practice and it takes it uh, there where uh, art uh, has always been, which is uh, society. Uh, it is uh, uh, taking away uh, art from the main art uh, venues, and it's getting it to areas where uh, things are at least difficult to be realized, but because they are they are not difficult, however, they are challenging. And that had always to do with challenge. Art had never to do with safety. 
safety is not uh, according to this concept that we have. We are working with uh, connected to our uh, ideas. Now, practically speaking, the past uh, actually the program is started in uh, late December, so it, we are running the sixth month. It has been a very difficult from the organizational part of view process. But what is important is that we kept with the conceptual aims and we were able to maintain this momentum and also solve a number of the administrative issues because it is a very innovative process and we don't want to make something that was predetermined or uh, uh, with uh, ready solutions, we really had to do with a number of things. So even the solutions that we are giving and the way that we are dealing with them is part of the art process. Now, uh, the, so far, uh, we have been able to implement a number of cafes and we have been able to, uh, from the artistic point of view, which create for us a meeting point of uh, with a regularity, like uh, we call it, uh, where we invite someone to talk about issues related to our aims. And uh, when I say we, I mean, you know, us as a group, even if some people are taking in one or the other more responsibility around that. Then there are the, there has been uh, the Gimaraes uh, venue with uh, the University of Minho and Natasha and uh, uh, Natasha Antao and uh, Miguel uh, Bandeira that really put together a very important event in the city of Gimaraes. Then there was another in-person event uh, which took place in France in uh, from Giga Circus and Fred is going to talk ab around about that and we are ready to launch our third uh, big adventure with Clara here who will uh, work uh, the next months uh, preparing and implementing the Grand Tour project. So this is more or less where we are. Uh, we are going to launch uh, we are preparing also our website, our uh, digital platforms, and we believe that uh, by the next few months, we will have all this ready so that you are all, you can all be constantly aware of the, of the process and how it's been implemented. Another important part, another important part of this project is the fact that uh, apart from us, we are hiring at least uh, us uh, young uh, people who are working administratively uh, and they are assisting, but their assistance is not only on the administrative level, it is also on the conceptual and, the, and on the empowering level of what we are doing. So again, uh, I think that uh, this is more or less what I had to say in these 10 minutes. Uh, I think uh, that, uh, you know, there are also in this momentum uh, events, like I have to mention it, which were not part of the, let's say, the officiality of the program, like uh, Sylvie Marfan from Giga Circus, uh, who will visit with, uh, who will visit PRESPA in the beginning of uh, uh, July, is also going to be a part of that. I think that the more we work, the more uh, events that are not uh, part of the program, uh, I mean, officially, but in art, there is not officiality and non-officiality. In art, there is a need to meet, a need, a need to exchange ideas, a need to work together, and a need to realize uh, issues, because uh, apart from the, this, uh, we consider that this implementation is like a pilot implementation, which will take us in the future, in the next step, to introduce these uh, processes in more and more uh, a widespread network of communities. Thank you very much. And uh, I don't know if I have to answer any questions, but if we could do it at the end. But uh, I think that 
this is more or less where we are. And I give the floor to Fred. I give the floor to Clara. Clara is our host. <laughs> and Clara will pass it to Fred. Uh... Maybe Fred and Sylvie can explain what they have been doing uh, in uh, in France, isn't it? Yes, sure. Hi. It's so uh, it's very good to to be with you. Uh, so yeah, I can start. I prepared uh, some uh, few slides, just five minutes to introduce. Uh, we just did a, a work residency training between the thirteenth and the twenty two of May. Uh, at Sylvie Marchand and Lionel Cambrai uh, studio uh, is an art uh, collective uh, Giga Circus in Villefagnan in France. And uh, now I will just share my screen to show you what we have done so far. Okay, you see my screen, okay? Yes? Yes? All right, good. Yes, so uh, we have uh, spent uh, a wonderful, very interesting uh, one uh, first uh, week of uh, residency training for the work uh, project. And uh, we explored uh, how to create a collaborative online, offline space uh, to bring uh, to the work project the questions of uh, borders the possibilities and limits of working with a special focus on uh, the human flux between South America, Asia, Africa, and Europe. So we, we envisioned uh, what we called a borderless work metaverse uh, in terms of uh, location, uh, but also technology. It's a audiovisual multi-screen installation. So if I show you some images, how we are, you can see the barn here. So it's a, a wonderful uh, a space to work together. And here you can see some screen uh, where we were uh, searching for this, uh, what we call uh, bivouac. And uh, so it's an audiovisual multi-screen installation uh, combined with the live channels of communication. So uh, it's really uh, for us uh, an attempt uh, to erase uh, visually and uh, conceptually also uh, every kind of uh, cultural, geopolitical, or technological border in a, in, a, in a space where we can all be together. So uh, at the end of the re re residence, uh, we uh, organized a public event and uh, we invited uh, the local community, uh, exiled artists, uh, and established uh, communication, live communication uh, with people uh, in Egypt and uh, the Ivory Coast. So you can see on screen that uh, you have a, a multi-screen uh, installation. So it, it can work as an art installation, but uh, we open uh, some uh, live channels and then it, it becomes uh, this uh, bivouac uh, borderless metaverse uh, uh, space of, uh, of communication and exchange. And it was really beautiful because uh, we had the, the participation and of the local community, uh, exiled people, people from other countries, especially in Africa. And we were all together and uh, it was a, a beautiful uh, first uh, a try really because it's a process. We, we are just searching and this big work will be something we will move around along the project in different locations of the partner as a place uh, to talk about these so important uh, uh, topics. Uh, so yes, more or less, that's what I wanted to to yeah, show you. Sylvie, you... perhaps if you want to, yes. to yes, add something more. Be, yeah, just to be concrete. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's true we did all this and concretely we uh, made a connection between uh, this guy uh, Solo who lives here from uh, Côte d'Ivoire and a friend of his who is uh, let's say stuck in, in his country and also uh, between uh, Ponce who's a writer and he is forbidden to get out of uh, Congo in fact he is a refugee in Egypt but he he has no right to move. And it was very important for him to read some of his texts 
uh, to us and, and to cross the borders. And this is what we aim to do. And also we had a, another writer from Sudan who uh, just arrived also because of the war in, in um, Egypt, but uh, uh, well, we made a passerelle bridge between these persons with uh, the community, local community here. And there were very interesting talks about what's going on in Sudan. We don't know here in France what's going on in Sudan. We we hardly know, and um, and it, it and uh, why artists are not so. Why is it so difficult for artists to uh, uh, let out their art? So this is just well. It was very concrete and and very lively. Thank you very much. Merci, Sylvie. Voilà. Merci, Fred. Uh, it's really amazing because if we do these things at the first months of these four years that we will be together, we are going to be able to use all these things in more places, in more of our projects. So it's like building one thing over the other and uh, collaborating with uh, these devices that are so amazing. So I think it's uh, really very exciting. It, it looks to me like the bivouac of a tribe uh, crossing in a caravan in the desert. So uh, there's so much imaginary. It's fascinating. I really like it very much and hope that we can see many other streamings like this and use it in our projects also. Thank uh, you. Do you guys have Questions about all this? Well, uh, if I can say something, it's just to initiate the dialogue. Uh, it is interesting how the tent, which is considered something like uh, related directly to the outside, becomes an inside. And it totally reverses the concept of what we call uh, uh, activity, art activity space, in a very provocative way. And uh, from that's one of the things that we kept from that. Well, I kept this from the this tension, uh, reading. Well, there are uh, several aspects to that. You can look and walk around the tent and it's transparent. So you can see the images coming from you know, from outside also. You can also be outside. There are several uh, different uh, gesture or ways of, to, to look at the piece. Uh, Voila. So, uh, but we are in the process of working. We're not finished at all. Uh, we have still a way, a, a long way to go to to uh, to tell you the truth. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, think Paul wants to say something. Oui. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like you know, it's a never-ending process, no? I guess. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wanted to thank you to kind of like bring into this group this other perspective, which is really needed, I would say, uh, from what we would call the global south. No, it's something that sometimes walking and uh, as uh, Yanis was saying, kind of like empowering and healing is um, is something that we give for granted uh but yes. uh there is kind of like particular kind of like circumstances and it's uh the majority in fact that uh, this is not the case no so uh yeah. thank you very much for this i think it's super important and super enriching for the group uh and at the same time uh maybe we can talk about that in another moment but i've been also working in uh in egypt in fact Okay. Uh, I was doing uh, research about our residencies in uh, in Egypt, and I went to several oases in Siwa and uh, and Sihari. And I wanted to know a little bit how the local community perceived uh, your project. No, I mean, if you can elaborate a little bit on that uh, aspect. No, I, 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 it's very difficult, my dear friend. Mm, it's mm. very difficult. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm very. Uh, I, I. Uh, I mean, I, I suffer a lot mm. there, and I'm afraid all the time, all the time, afraid, you know, of being stopped and stuck and put in prison. And I don't mm. feel at ease at all. Mm. People don't walk, don't talk, uh, and at all. And uh, I have to be extremely uh, uh, to make to pay attention to where I am uh, and where I talk to and who uh, and in 
it's uh, home and uh, like hidden in a way, hidden. You know, I felt for the first time, I, I've been four times and I will go more. And uh, I felt for the first time in my life, uh, the pressure of uh, dictatorship. Mm. And it's not an impression. Mm. It is, uh, and also the people I meet, of course, I chose are people who are, who are uh, threatened, who are someone, some of them uh, rushed out of prison, uh, fle mm -hmm. fled out of prison, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't have paper, paperless, you know, uh, mm. how you say that in English? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Legal, yeah. Uh, mm. So, so I mean, it's really, <laughs> I'm freaking out all the time, mm. and I need courage. I, mm. I, uh, that you need courage. And uh, but I meet so many beautiful persons. So I was working here with uh, also with uh, refugees. So I know what they and that's why I went there. I know what they go through. But I I wanted to uh, give uh, Occidental Western, you know, the world uh, to 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 give this uh, epicenter, this uh, depths of history and uh, an experience. Absolutely. They are not just migrant and an image, you know, someone coming, we don't know who mm -hmm. is But I, I really want to go uh, into the the mm. flesh of, uh, mm. of the difficulties and also uh, not to not to to cry, but to overcome and to okay. little by little build something that's called peace and bring peace uh, to people because they, they are feeling so good when they can express themselves mm. and in particular th those uh, I I, br I brought some books who had been forbidden in Egypt I brought them back to mm. the writers here and mm. uh, well, I mean it's it, I, I, I could speak uh, or maybe I'll write a book but I'll do this piece you know to to, to express I just wanted to say that the 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 is uh, is the way uh, is a way to stop because walking you can't walk without stopping don't mm. you you have to eat you have to sleep you have to recover you have to rest you have to think mm. so this is a way uh, in 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 the movement then it's a a, a, a place to stop and think mm. and it's a place of hospitality well mm. i don't have Absolutely. much just kind of like if I have some, um, I can, can I make a last question? Yeah, go, go on. Yeah. So uh, just kind of like two things. Where are you based in Egypt? I mean, kind of like where this tent was set? Uh, in Egypt, I travel or I have, I'm based, I, I, I'm looking, I'm an anthropologist and uh, I'm based at uh, CEDEJ. It's a CNRS Center for National Research hmm. uh, in, in Egypt. There, hmm. In all countries, there there's a CEDEJ. Uh, uh, Semka in Mexico, Sedej in, in Egypt. Mm. Uh, uh, so uh, and also I work, but but I I go uh, freely. I go as mm. an artist, and they uh, and I met them, and uh, and and I found very comfortable to have a, a, a route there. But mm. uh, I travel, you know, down to the to the S Sudanese border to mm. uh, also okay. to the north, the Delta. Mm. Uh, mm. Mansura, a lot. Mm. I have, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, like a foot in the desert and a foot in the in okay. the countryside. So okay. no, it's very uh, the diversity I, I, of things. Okay, and just uh, like maybe for later on, we can. Uh, there is like this uh, project called La Serre in uh, Morocco. Okay, uh, I don't know. I yeah. Observatoire that it's also like a tent. Oh. In fact. It's like a more, uh, it's like, a, um, how do you call that? It's just kind of like, you know, this thing for the plants, the Ivernacla. Um, it's like a tent and they do kind of like all kind of like cultural events. Maybe at some extent um, it would be interesting to put you in contact, you know, because it's just kind of like, uh, there's kind of like quite a lot of parallels there. Yes. I think. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, well, uh, as a matter of fact, we've been using this particular parachute. It's a parachute. Yeah. Ah, yes. We, we've been using it for twenty years, and mm. uh, the first piece we used it with, with is on the uh, le, le chemin de Compostelle, the uh, Compostela mm. track, you know, in mm. the north of, of Spain, uh, to, uh, to 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 translate, you know, and so. But uh, maybe sometimes we won't have a tent, and we'll just have. Um, just a, come on here, a piece of a, a piece of a canvas, uh, and mm. and it is supposedly light, uh, easy to uh, mm. put up and uh, fast. 
But the okay. idea is to stop at, at a point and uh, and discuss and meet the people around. Uh, so that's why I'm so eager to go to uh, <laughs> to see um, Yanis in uh, in uh, Prespa because there are three borders there, and I, I I'm going to extend my field working over there, and it's it's going to be fabulous. And at the same mm -hmm. time, walk and mm -hmm. discover beautiful people and. Uh, of course, there is always this pleasure of meeting people and landscape. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for this. I thank just you. put the link, the link to this project in the chat if you want to have a look. I thank think you. it can. Thank can you be. so much. What's your name again? Pau. Paul. Pau. Yeah. Well, well, in Catalan is P A U. Pau. D'accord. Pau. Which in fact means peace in Catalan. <laughs> Anyways, we are going out of topic now. We, so. we, 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 we might meet because uh, we, are, we are planning for a trip also, uh, thanks to this walk uh, network mm. uh, to, uh, to uh, experiment borders in, of Europe. Okay, wonderful. Yes. And uh, well, see you later. It, see will be a, it will be a pleasure. Yes, totally. And, uh, see you in Egypt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Great. That's that's uh, what this uh, network of ours was made for. I mean, we are learning so much in these first months, and we are contacting so much people. It is not just we, the the nuclear group. We are now expanding. We know start knowing uh, the contacts of each other, and it's becoming very exciting. We'll dedicate the second part of this meeting to something that is going to happen in August, which is Grand Tour. Uh, well, we are more or less in family, so most of you know what is Grand Tour, but uh, still for the ones that don't know, <laughs> I will uh, explain very shortly. This year it will be our 10th Grand Tour, so it's not uh, a new project. And Grand Tour said in very short uh, sentence is a walk of about 250, 300 kilometers that we walk in uh, normally in, during three weeks of August with uh, artists of all the disciplines. So people who want to attend, artists or not artists, go come all together, go all together and uh, walk in a previous uh, path that has been designed and live together, walk together, sing, dance, uh, those things together and uh, until the end. One very important thing also is the, the hosts. We find people in the way, in the path that you could meet in another way because they are not uh, they are not people very visible and uh, you meet these extra ultra local people and we make friends everywhere we started in 2015 and uh, at the beginning we were still in a quite um, classical framework in the sense that we were asking the artists to perform what they knew what they were prepared to perform, for example, a small um, theater piece or a concert or a, a visual performance or a choreography. And this was like that for three, four years. But uh, slowly we were changing, we evolved to another kind of behavior in which there is no so much research of results and there is no much showing and no much uh, watching, but much more being there and being part of. So this was already a little bit like this, but it changed completely in the pandemics because at that time we couldn't program any, any performance, any concert, anything, because uh, everything was forbidden. And that year we started to do things for ourselves and to expand this ourselves to the local community where we were staying. And we saw that this was much more interesting than just programming the traditional kind of uh, 
art that can be programmed in other contexts, like in the auditorium or in the in the concert hall or in other classical places. And now what we do is, uh, we don't know very well what we do, but we are there, we live together, and uh, we are very open to what can happen, to whom we meet, to the interaction with the local communities that we find, and things are happening on their, on their own, somehow. Uh, we used to walk in spiral, like this, in the territory, and always start the next travel where we had ended the previous year. But this year we have broken the tradition in because we by doing this spiral, we were now very, very, very far away from our uh, normal places where we live. And we were in places very empty of the Western Spain in which the communication is very bad and it was very difficult to reach the places where we were. So in order to make a little bit easy for this year, the, the arriving and departing, especially from people coming from out of Catalonia, this year we decided to draw an axis from the north to the south and we will go from the French border in the Pyrenees, in Pucharda to Barcelona. Also, I have to say that entering Barcelona is a challenge for me. Uh, I was a little bit afraid always of walking in the metropolitan area and especially in Barcelona, which is a very big city, because it's a difficult place. And it is not always pleasant in the sense of the very picturesque uh, idea of pleasure. But in this moment in Barcelona, there is a wonderful uh, different groups of research about the metropolitan area of Barcelona, either with urbanism, human geography, cartography. Uh, there's lots of people doing research on the rivers. And it was really the moment not only to walk these places, but also to be accompanied, to be together, to listen to all the research that these people has done. So that was another reason for, for entering Barcelona. So we will start on August 13th and we will end up on August 31st. And uh, on 31st, we will enter by the Besos River in Barcelona. It will be very different for someone who, who is not an, uh, a Catalan, very different of taking the, the flight and going to the airport and taking the airbus and uh, stopping in Plaza de Catalunya. We will come by another place, by another path. I hope it's going to be very interesting, not only for the people from out of Catalonia, but also for ourselves because what we have in the surrounding areas of Barcelona is extremely interesting and is uh, the most important part of our history of last uh, 80 or 100 years. So, um, because of that, because I wanted uh, to, to, to communicate and to and to make you feel what has been these 10 years of Grand Tour, uh, I have invited four uh, people that are here among us that have been in Grand Tour uh, many times, and uh, some of them not so many, and one never. So each and one I invited for a different reason. And the first person, uh, I will give uh, the word is Zoe Balask. Hello, Zoe. Zoe is there. She, Zoe is a body researcher, a dancer, a movement uh, researcher also. And what attracts me more of her work is that he connects very well history, uh, anthropology, and body. Uh, you can say that he gets the anthropology in her own body somehow. And that when she, she explains 
when she dances or when she moves, she is transmitting you these many hundreds and hundreds of years that in fact are part of our skin. So um, to Zoe, um, well, I would like Zoe you to explain to the other what, uh, why did you start to come to Grand Tour and what has been your experience along the years? Okay. Hello and thank you, Clara, for inviting me to, to talk about my experience in the Grand Tour. And first of all, I was really curious about what was exactly Grand Tour because it was like a big uh, question. And I think it's something that one has to experience to know what is it. Because uh, from my point of view and from my artistic uh, uh, practice, I think that Grand Tour uh, has enriched my artistic practice due to the nomadic nature of the Grand Tour. That because it requires to adapting my proposals to environments and contexts with no many technical resources. So this limitation shifts the focus more towards to the performative content and interaction with the audience, creating an intimate and shared experience. And this is uh, for me, a uh, big experience that turns the experience uh, into a sort of laboratory where I can experiment present and finish it work and adapt proposals to receive uh, an initial feedback. So at the end, it's somehow a sharing experiences with the audience and in, a, in another hand, on a personal level, uh, I would like to highlight the sense of group and the community. And this is uh, something that it comes from the journey, the everyday life, and moments of both uh, joy and challenge as well, such as dealing with the heat or uh, extended distances, for example. So despite these uh, challenges, the overall experience is unique. Um, I highly, highly enriching the, um, and giving, um, offering human quality. I think this is the big uh, uh, quest, um, sentence, no? This human quality. So I recommend 100% to, to have this experience, not only for artistic people or working artists, uh, for everyone to grow, to connect, to explore new aspects on their practice uh, in a supportive uh, environment or dynamic uh, uh, sort of family. It's, uh, at the end, I feel this, somehow that you are with the family because um, you live together, you eat together, you work, sometimes you need to uh, stay in silence, sometimes you share. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, very special, uh, this experience. Thank you very much. <laughs> See. Thanks to you, Zoe, because one very interesting thing that is happening with the artists that come many times, like Zoe, is that by seeing how the things have developed, you learn what can you as curator ask from these artists and where the things can go. And it's like growing together, the artists and, and the other. And uh, it, for... With some people in Grand Tour, it's been uh, very much like this, and it's been a very intense experience. And now I would like to, well, you have heard a little bit already Pau. Uh, Pau, as, you, as he has said, he's a researcher, and I invited him because Pau is doing research on uh, residencies. 
specialized in residencies. He did a very interesting project of uh, art residencies in the north of Africa and uh, also nomadic residencies. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I thought that as our uh, being together in Grand Tour for me is a residency in Hall, uh, I would like very much to to that you explain this in from this point of view. Thank you, Clara, for this. I think that this would take kind of like a couple of hours to explain the whole thing. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I just wanted to start saying that, uh, and this is going to sound a little bit grand, but we are talking about the grand tour, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I just wanted to uh, to start to start say, uh, uh, to start by saying that. But yeah, the Grand Tour for me was a, um, a life-changing experience, I have to say. Uh, and this is because one concept that I find quite essential uh, in residencies and beyond them, which is uh, the concept of time uh, and how we perceive time. No, It's not a secret that... Um, that yeah, nowadays uh, time is a is a treasure, no? It's something that we all crave for, um, and it's a treasure because no one has time, no. Everyone is just kind of like all the time doing things, doing things, you know. Uh, you talk with anyone and just kind of like, oh, I'm really busy doing this and this other project and this other one and applying for this grant, applying for this residency. Um, uh, and for me, uh, the grand tour. I was lucky enough to be part of the 2022 Grand Tour, which is like two years ago, which just which was kind of like right after the uh, pandemic, no? It was right after the COVID. You know, the COVID uh, was like something kind of like really dramatic for most of us, but at the same time, it opened some kind of like a door of opportunity for like changing things, for doing things a little bit better, no? Sadly enough, it seems that kind of like this thing is kind of like it's uh, we are continuing with the same kind of like practices and the Grand Tour in my uh, in my um, experience. Um, and that's why I'm saying that it was kind of like life changing. It was kind of like a really a moment of neglecting or like challenging all these ways of perceiving time. So it was fascinating and even at some extent it was even <laughs> Uh, a mystical experience, no? Because kind of like walking for like twenty days, I was kind of like a, a privileged enough to to do the twenty days, and I think that this is quite crucial. Uh, walking for twenty days in the company of this amazing group of people, but also like having the opportunity to um, uh, include you in, but at the same time withdraw yourself from the group, you know, kind of like being in and out. And then connecting, uh, you know, every step that you do with kind of, um, you know, kind of like the landscape that is surrounding you, which is kind of like huge, no? This kind of like connection between the micro and the macro for me was totally uh, magic, I have to say. So um, that's why I'm saying that it was a life changing experience. And on top of this, uh, again, I was lucky enough for Clara to invite me as uh, there's kind of like in the Grand Tour, there's like this uh, figure uh, that is, uh, we in Catalan call it the Relator, which would be kind of like the one that is somehow documenting, uh, documenting a little bit the, the Grand Tour itself, no? the edition of that year. What is amazing about this is that, uh, again, uh, Clara and the team, et cetera, is um, giving you total freedom for this. So there's no, I mean, I was the I was the relator. I was the one that had to kind of like do a project out of it. But what was amazing about it, it was like the freedom that you had for that, not just kind of like Clara didn't put any kind of um, requirement. Just kind of like, okay, do you want to do that? I said, yes, perfect. That's it, you know, and then from here, you are totally uh, in freedom to develop a, a project. It's a project that doesn't have to happen during the Grand Tour, so kind of like it ha can happen kind of la later on. And this is quite unique, I have to say, you know, because it just kind of like give you space, first of all, to just, um, uh, as uh, Yanis was saying, to empower yourself and to heal yourself through the walking. And then after that, you can just kind of like uh, reflect, develop, and uh, create a project, no? 
So uh, I don't think it's the moment now to explain the project I did. I'm really happy about it. It's a website. It's really beautiful. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I'm really... Um, I did yeah. on the chat. I can put it on the chat later on, yes. Uh, it's a reflection on, uh, uh, in fact, on uh, on my research topic, which is kind of um, uh, mobile communities, no? Communities that move, okay? So uh, this links somehow uh, with uh, my research on our residencies. One of the, as Clara was saying, at some extent, if we understand art or artistic practices a little bit beyond uh, creating artistic objects, um, more than kind of like in, in another sense, we become like more creating relationships. But if you put, if we put kind of like that side apart. Our residencies uh, have kind of like two other important components. One of them is the, the journey. So it's kind of like you have to be mobile to go to an art residency. And then it's like knowledge exchange, no? So uh, basically what I try to document at some extent uh, with in a quite um, experimental methodology was, uh, which was in fact related to Grand Tour and is the cabinet of curiosities, no? Um, was like trying to look at history uh, in search for uh, several communities in which um, in which uh, these two components were uh, compulsory. One is like traveling and one is uh, knowledge exchange. So I can explain you a little bit more about this uh, in another moment if you want, when we meet maybe hopefully in, uh, in, uh, in Girona. Uh, in the conference that uh, Clara and all the team is organizing. I hope that uh, to meet you all there. But going back to uh, the question that Clara was um, somehow uh, uh, proposing me about nomadic residencies. Again, there is no much time here now to, split, to talk about this, but we're lucky enough in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the contemporary context to have like several examples. As Clara was saying, I specialize or I collaborate with uh, organizations in um, in North Africa and the Middle East. And uh, and yeah, there is kind of like uh, multiple examples of that. In fact, I just finished my uh, PhD and uh, uh, my PhD is trying to look at um, alternative histories of our re residencies that are not Eurocentric. Uh, so I look at Arab. Uh... Wow. Yeah, sorry. I have to cut you because. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. We can. I, I can send you. I can send you. I can send you all the links. It's just kind of like another oh, way of looking at residencies based on walking and uh, and uh, knowledge I exchange. So there is something very much in common uh, between Pau and the person who will uh, explain to you coming now, which is Tamsin. No, yeah. Not everybody does the full grand tour. Not everybody walks for twenty two days. But some people do, and they are very important because the narrative that will happen along this year is held by, by these people, even unconsciously. I mean, people is going and coming, but the ones that stay from the beginning to the end are the ones that uh, create that uh, threat that make it uh, very easy for the people to join and to leave. So Tamsin... Uh, Tamsin was very courageous. We met in Prespa, and uh, I know she was. I knew she was perfectly capable to to come to us, even if she didn't speak any Catalan, because people say, "Well, we don't speak Spanish," but it is not Spanish. The group speaks Catalan. Of course, when we have people from other countries, we we, we speak English, but not all the time and not in group. So Tam Sim, who is a Taoist and Zen Shiatsu practitioner and walking visual artist and sound artist, I would like uh, you to, to explain your experience to your experience through this uh, point of view of not being able to catch everything in all moments and how did you communicate with your body and all these uh, details that you and I know very well. Thank you, Clara. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm Tamsin, based in Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, I'm going to uh, talk, yes, a little bit about um, my lovely experience with El Grand Tour, with Pau, with Zoe, with, uh, with lots of the other amazing uh, Catalonian 
artists who I walked with, I uh, was in the um, the main the the continuity the group that was continuous through through the the whole time last year. Um, so I I and I specifically chose to do that so that I was there at the beginning and could grasp um, uh, the, the very very start right through until the end. And I was very pleased that I had done that. It was it was. Um, the right choice for me to do that. Um, yes, as Clara says, I have some Spanish, some French, and that made almost no difference at all. <laughs> uh, Catalan is is most definitely the main language, and um, the and not just the Catalan language, but the Catalan way of being. So the energy is very high, it's very um, lively, uh, there, there are many people who have lots to say, and many people who um, are great friends from, from meeting each year. And so they are catching up and they are um, greeting each other and sharing what's been happening in the year. So it's a, a very energetic, dynamic uh, experience um, alongside in, in the heat, in uh, while you're walking, sometimes, as Zoe said, some very long days, some big climbs. Um, so it's um, there's already a lot to immerse yourself in, to be to be immersed in um, before you even start with language. And luckily, as human beings, we communicate with our whole bodies, with the tone of voice, with with our gestures. Um, and and in fact, that is um, I've forgotten the percentage, but something like 85 percent of our communication is not through language. Thank goodness when you're in this situation. Um, so I uh, am familiar with walking um, solo most of the time, and I had I have an ongoing project called Separation and Unity. Um, and so uh, this this uh, grand tour worked very well for me artistically. I was able to be quieter and more at the back of the group. Um, partly because I couldn't communicate and understand all the time and partly because that allowed me the experience of walking solo, but in the safety of the group, in the friendliness of the group. Um, and I could, I could hear so that it, it, it helped me become very familiar with the energy of the language. And I could start to notice the, the, the um, habitual sounds and the, the way that people interacted with each other, which of course helps to understand what's going on. So sometimes people separated from the main group and came to speak to me. And I was really grateful for that uh, because there were times when it was wonderful to have one-to-one -one conversations um, and some people speak brilliant English so that is um, that's very very likely to happen some people are even willing to translate when we're in a group situation which was really fantastic because otherwise there are times when you can feel that you are separated too much from what's going on the main um, ex the main times when that happened were we have uh, we were carrying a, a, a library of books with us, which was a brilliant idea. Um, and everybody brought a book with them and explained and introduced their book. And we had opportunities to read the books and to to discuss the books. Um, that that bit was hard without Catalan. Um, Meal times were sometimes tricky because that's traditionally the time everybody's at their most um, exuberant. And the third time was if there was performances, um, then and they were in Catalan, then of course it wasn't possible for me to understand everything that was going on. But because most people are very, uh, very body aware, and because there are people who are there who are able to translate at times and because we read each other's body language and gesture uh, these weren't major problems um, so yes it was a, a really um, interesting experience um, and at one point I was talking about uh, how I often walk in silence even when I'm leading groups or work walking with groups and and the group very kindly 
um, obliged and we we had a part of one day walking in silence. Um, afterwards, people gave me a lot of feedback, which I recorded, which I still don't know what they said because it was all in, in fast Catalan. But one day I will find somebody who was kind enough to translate that for me. Um, I will. <laughs> Thank you. But it, but it, it didn't matter because we had that experience of walking together as a group, as a unit, um, without language. And so everybody was in the same situation. The only the only the the last few things I would say is that it is a very useful and very valuable experience to be the foreigner in a group, even despite being white and being middle class and English being such a um a language that so many people are pressurized to speak and have been in the past. It, what a great experience for me to be in the minority for once and to be the person that wasn't the one. So that's a, a brilliant experience, a brilliant learning experience. And it, even if you don't want to be in that situation for the entire Grand Tour uh, or cannot because of time, um, a few days or a week would still give you that, that um, valuable experience. So thank you, Claire. Thank you, thank you, Tamsin. You are great. It is true that you were really very courageous and you did very well. And uh, one good thing that we have uh, got by uh, entering in this international group is to be able, and that is our objective now, to open this Grand Tour to Europe and to the world. So one of the first things we did in this Grand Tour, apart from isn't the ways of arriving and departure in this uh, this year 2024 was uh, offering a grant to uh, someone who came from one of our partners. You know that we are six partners, and we curated, we appointed curating um, each and one of the partners one or two uh, appointed artists that. Uh, would be granted for this grant tour uh, to do the whole grant tour. So it had to be artists that wanted to do uh, this long walk and that were prepared for the experience. Uh, we have chosen two people. Alba Sauleda is Catalan. She has not been able to come today, but Greek Anna Piatou is with us today. And uh, she cannot explain how she has been uh experienced in grand tour but what is she expecting of her uh, travel in august so we are very happy to welcome her uh very happy to have her in the community and uh, very eager to know what is she expecting from from the experience hello clara hello everyone i'm i'm very glad that i'm here today uh, in this group and hear all these shared experiences of the Grand Tour. And I feel really privileged that the committee funded me so I would be able to uh, experience it myself. Um, well, my uh, first experience of walking uh, in the mountains was uh, during my studies in Northwest Greece and um, my participation in Visual March for Prespa. And there I came for the first time familiar with the rough mountain of Gramos mountains where the first battles of civil war happened, of Greek civil war. And I'm very interested in the similarities of Greek and Spanish civil war that lately I read that was Spanish civil war was conducted in the Pyrenees mountains. And I think they are uh, interconnected in the sense of how they dealt with the memory and the way they suppress the mourning for the defeated parts. Both countries, um, the fascist Franco regime and the Greek uh, post-war, uh, yes, during the civil war government, um, could not carry out real conciliation, reconciliation because they would undermine the foundations of their legitimacy. This brought, they said, the outcome of bringing a rupture in the history of the two countries and an unhealed trauma. 
as any civil war leaves the most painful scars uh, with the, the most lasting effects. And as a result of that, today, we see the genealogies that divide people into categories being repeated and new power structures being exercised over the, the thinking, the thought of division between us and the others, always someone others. One of the guerrillas of the Greek Democratic Army has told me that uh, when they walked through the mountains at the time during the Civil War, in the paths, in the night, they formed a line one behind the other, very close and even holding the, the front of them, the person in front, in order not to get lost. And she remembers that from the, from the tiredness of the fights and for being, uh, uh, not having sleep, enough sleep, she would sleep walking while walking. Um, sorry? No, 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 no. I was speaking to someone here. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Um, yes. As well, they, they performed various burial rituals for the dead fighters with the dancing and singing around the, the recently buried bodies. So I'm thinking during during the, 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 the during the the ground tour to recall and materialize uh, in a sense these experiences, inviting in them the participants and activate it in a kind of activating care practices um, and bringing in the fore this silence loss by establishing a relationship of solidarity between us. Um, in order to uh, understand the relationality of, uh, of yesterday's history and in order to create a uh, more resilient and inclusive community communities in the future. Um, I think by networking, we could try to network the trauma through this nomadic cohabitation, through this walking residency. And um, what can I say? I'm I'm. It's a challenge because. Uh, because even the fact that I'm not uh, obligated to, to perform anything, it's even more challenging. Um, and I'm glad to hear all of you before that you shared so, uh, so nicely your experience. Uh, I, yeah, I feel I will, um, I will, be, this, I will be able to, 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 uh, to to participate in a great experience with you. I'm sure, I'm sure, Anna. And we will also be very happy to to share your uh, your point of view. I was saying before to to Andrew and to Fred that uh, when I went to Gramos with um, Yanis, I learned how similar the situation of our Catalan uh, Catalans in the Spanish Civil War was to the Greek Civil War. How, how we were uh, promised so many things and we were abandoned by the whole international community and, and how finally the memory was never restored or if not never because one day it will be but has not yet been restored and how similar and how uh, sisterly I felt with uh, this situation. So now this year we are starting in the Pyrenees. We are crossing the border the first day, entering France and coming out to the to the border again with the contrabandist uh, web path. So we will experience exactly the, exper the experience in the place where it happened. I would like have liked so much to hear uh, you all here. I think the next conference we should program less and listen more because uh, I see all the faces of friends and I would love to have time to 
to listen to your comments and to answer to your questions. It seems that we cannot go further because it is programmed so, but uh, I'm sure that in the times to come, we will uh, adapt, adjust that so that uh, we can really speak all together. Anyway, many of you, I will see you in the first week of July in Walking Arts and Relational Geographies. And we are having great times there. Viv, Anna, Anna, Tamsin, Pau, Andrew also. So, well, the sooner the better. And I wait for you all in Grand Tour. And if it is not this year, next year. So, goodbye to all. Thank you very much for attending. And hope to see you very soon. And really thank you to the participants of of that have explained their experiences because you, you are very generous with your appreciations.